Hello, my name is Krzysztof Zając, uh, and I would like to describe how CertPL is scanning the Polish internet and finding vulnerabilities at scale. So, uh, I'm, a, I'm Krzysztof Zając, I'm Senior Threat Analysis Specialist at CertPL, uh, and uh, I also uh, to, uh, teach offensive security and, at the University of Warsaw. And the purpose, uh, this talk has three purposes. So first is uh, to show our approach, also describing the non-technical uh, environment around our security scanning, uh, to, show our tool of, to show our tool, of course, and to encourage you to start similar project if you, projects if you are in a position to do so. Uh, all of these purposes are equally important. Uh, okay, so why we built this scanner? Uh, we are a national CSERT. Uh, we don't want only to pre handle incidents, but also to prevent them. So uh, we wanted, for example, if we noticed that uh, a university accidentally exposed a Git folder containing API keys to an, an important system containing student data with names, addresses, grades, just everything, uh, we wanted to build a system which we will be able to prevent similar cases. So, for example, check whether similar problems don't occur on, uh, occur on uh, uh, other public entity websites. Okay, so we built a system. We built a system which takes a domain, that runs some scanning and produces a report. Uh, because we don't want to produce these reports manually, it's too hard, we decided to build a system which will be, pro be able to produce a text message ready to be sent to the scanned entity. Uh, of course, uh, because our constituency is very big, it consists of a lot of entity types, uh, we don't put single domains into the system. We put like all Polish government domains, all local government domains, all schools, all hospitals, and receive a package of reports from the system. Okay, so what do we check? Uh, this, uh, the system we built has a couple dozen of modules. Uh, first, it takes a domain and enumerates subdomains. Uh, then it checks whether the domain is close to the expiry date. Uh, then it checks for the DNS configuration, so whether it's possible to perform a zone transfer, or maybe uh, uh, the subdomain is registered on a hosting provider and the hosting provider account expired and can be registered by an attacker. So uh, we also check the email spoofing protection mechanisms because uh, in our constituency we had a big problem with, we still have a problem with spoofing. So like uh, people trying to influence the elections by sending spoofed emails about one party providing, I don't know, free funerals for old people, just crazy stuff. So, uh, so we uh, check whether this email spoofing protection mechanisms are uh, set up correctly. Uh, we also check whether the uh, TLS certificates are correct, whether the redirect is in place. So uh, just all the low-hanging fruits. We scan the ports, of course, and we identify the services. So whether it's HTTP or the data or a database or a, a, I don't know FTP. And after identifying the services, we may we are able to check this, the versions of the content management systems, the plugins, whether WordPress plugins are closed. So, for example, they are not developed anymore because they got banned from the plugin repository for for security vulnerabilities. It happens. Um, we support Nuclei. Who of you knows about Nuclei? The minority, so I strongly recommend you this tool. It's a very good open source tool that is able to detect thousands of vulnerabilities and misconfigurations, including serious ones, including even remote code execution vulnerabilities. Uh, we also check for SQL injection and cross-site scripting. We have uh, multiple modules that check SQL injections because it's still, unfortunately, it's still important. Uh, we check whether JavaScript is loaded from expired domains, uh, because an attacker can register that domain and serve malicious JavaScript. This also happens. Uh, we, check, we check also for the standard low-hanging fruit misconfigurations, so weak passwords, exposed directory index, and yes, we found the directory index with like juicy backups or sensitive informations in them. Uh, we, we, of course, detect exposed code repositories, exposed login panels, which are not a vulnerability per se, but uh, they can be used, for example, to, I don't know, lock, locked in with, log in with a leaked password. So, so yeah, so we convince our scanned entities to hide as much of such 
systems as possible. Uh, of course, we detect accidentally published files, and yes, we find a lot of like slash WordPress config dot php dot back because yeah, that that happens. We have, if I recall correctly, we have more than a hundred of of such such cases, uh, and this system allows you to integrate any other tool, commercial or open source. Uh, this list I shared comes from our experience in handling incidents. Because, for example, we learned that somebody, our, a public entity in Poland, got hacked uh, because of an SQL injection vulnerability. So we try to improve our capabilities of SQL injection detection. Uh, so the system takes a list of domains, finds subdomains, scans ports, finds vulnerabilities, filters false positives, and builds reports. So the, the thing you need, we need to do manually, except, of, of course, we need to manage and debug the system sometimes. Um, we need to find a list of domains, put it into the system, and send a package of reports the system prepares. After some, of course, sanity checking, whether it actually makes any sense. Uh, this is an example of the email. So we say, uh, what is the problem? Where is the problem? And... Uh, why is it a problem that making a code repository public may allow an attacker, blah, 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 blah. We send this, but in Polish, to our entities so that we don't have to write emails manually because it's, it's, it's boring. It's a waste of time, a waste of human potential. Uh, my clicker doesn't like me anymore. Okay, so we send these reports to scant entities. Uh, so first, you need to have a list of domains. Uh, I will press the button stronger and the clicker will work. So uh, to get a list of domains for scanning, if you are a hosting provider, you may take your customers. If you are, uh, for example, a C-cert, you may take a data portal. So for example, in Poland, we have a, a pol data portal for Poland, which contains, for example, data about all local government domains. We have a separate, uh, we have a separate data portal for, uh, uh, for schools. Uh, you can do, for example, open, you can, for example, use open source data, like the certificate transparency logs, to learn, for example, about all government domains in your country. So these are all government domains in Germany, but the source doesn't work today, so I will skip it. Uh, okay, uh, or you can, for example, have a data portal in your country for schools or for any type of entities. Uh, you may, for example, scrap a portal. So, for example, this thing, uh, this, this link is I have the right to know.pl, which contains a lot of information about Polish politics, about politicians, parties, senators, etc., candidates. So, we can, for example, scrap, so we, we could scrap it and sc run scans of candidates before the elections. Because if we don't do this, bad guys can do this as well. So uh, there are there are multiple sources of uh, of uh, uh, of domain data, and if you if you want to scan uh, run your scans, you will have plenty of source in your country, maybe different. So uh, so I encourage you to try various ones, and in Cert PL we try all of these data sources because yeah because we don't have a central data portal for everything. Uh, so we scan all government domains in Poland, we scan local government, we scan municipal corporations like doing waste management or water or, uh, or st stuff like that, key service operators, banks, uh, we scan educational entities, so all universities, schools, preschools, etc., hospitals, newspapers, politician websites, uh, we scan professional self-government, so like medical chambers. Uh, we also scan uh, a list of domains provided voluntarily. Provided voluntarily. So, uh, because this, this project is quite like... We, we, we try to be open about this project. We inform a lot of entities about this project. So they said, hi, we are the ministry of, of, this, of this, and could you please scan these hundred of domains? Yes, of course we could. Why not? Uh, and of course, we scan domains produced voluntarily by companies. And I know you are mostly technical people, but please don't don't uh, start sleeping or, or browsing TikToks or on this slide. This is important. If you are designing a law, 
uh, for, about scanning or implementing NIST 2, please don't design law that allows you to scan only a small subset of entities. Or please don't design law that requires actions that are not viable in case of broad scans. So for example, uh, don't design law that requires you to write a email or, uh, I don't know, uh, agree on a, a, a timeline of scans with any, every scan in institution, because this will kill your scanning projects. project. Uh, the possibility to perform, perform broad scans was crucial for the success of this project. So keep an eye on that. It's important. Uh, time for some statistics. Uh, we scan uh, more than 250,000 uh, of domains and IPs and 600,000 of subdomains uh, at least uh, one time per year, but, but most of the time more. Uh, and since, since January 2023, we found and reported uh, uh, 450,000 of uh, vulnerabilities and misconfigurations, including almost 30,000 of severe, se severe ones. Uh, for example, we found over 1,000 of confirmed SQL agent injections vulnerabilities. By confirmed, I mean we were able to actually uh, execute a query and notify the scanned entity, hello, this is your database username, could you please fix the vulnerability? So, yeah, we have some, some successes. Uh, we already sent over 100,000 uh, uh, 100, emails, and we have a separate team which calls the scanned entities if they don't care. If they don't care, or if, if their spam filters blocked our emails, because email is hard, it may get blocked. This stuff happens. Or maybe we contacted a person which is, uh, uh, which no longer works here, or we had one case about a, uh, a reply, hey, this person is unfortunately not with us anymore, I mean that. So it happens. Uh, reactions are mostly positive. Uh, we sometimes receive bug reports, but it happens. We try to incorporate this information into our scanning so that we have less false positives. Uh, and what is important, sometimes, uh, sometimes the administrators know about the problem, but they aren't allowed to fix it. For example, a university admin always wanted to remove an old website, but this is an important website for a professor. And he says, no, 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 we have to keep it. And the admin can take an email from, from the Polish national CSERT. Hello, the CSERT is complaining that it's vulnerable. Can we please take it down? Yes, it, it sometimes sometimes it works. Okay, so I have a video demo. I hope it will work. Uh, okay, so we add some targets to the system. I added uh, a thousand of schools. Uh, I select only some modules, so port scanning, WordPress plugin version check, and WordPress version check, and started scanning. The system has some information about which modules are. Uh, intrusive, like doing a lot of dangerous stuff like nuclei or SQL injection check, and which, which are like, like uh, lightweight. After adding the targets, I can browse them, I can sort them, I can filter them. Uh, of course, I can, uh, um, I can find the results for, for every particular school, uh, but I can also uh, browse raw results, which are boring. Every scanner has that. Like, raw results, including port scanning, are boring, and nobody wants to look at that. I can look at the task queue, how, how many tasks are still to be done, uh, to, for, to be able to debug the system. Mm, I can, for example, look that 20 web pages wait for the WordPress plugin version check, and I can, for example, uh, see that after some, min some minutes of scannings, uh, I can, of course, remove pending tasks, and I can see that after some minutes of scanning, I have first WordPress vulnerabilities. If I scroll to the bottom, I see, yeah, found WordPress problems. WordPress version this is too old. And, of course, all of this is boring. Every scanner has that. Every scanner has a long table with vulnerabilities. Uh, what is important uh, f uh, in Artemis is that uh, it has an export feature, which allows you to export a package of emails. A package of emails which we then send to scanned entities in an almost automated way. We have to find the contacts, but uh, as you see, the following addresses contain old WordPress versions. 
like emails for different schools. Of course, I have censored the school names on this video. Uh, so, after exporting, uh, I see a zip file. After exporting, I see a zip file containing emails for every scanned entity, and I can uh, pass it to an automated system that sends the vulnerability information. Okay, and uh, exporting the reports is, I think, the most important feature of Artemis because it filters the uh, boring stuff from the interesting stuff. We don't send port, port scanning results. Nobody cares. Maybe, some, maybe people care about some exposed ports, I don't know, RDP, but not, uh, not about everything. So we uh, uh, distinguish the boring stuff from the interesting stuff and send only the interesting stuff. Uh, some problems don't make it to the reports. And Artemis checks whether a problem is interesting enough so that the reports, they are not perfect. They, they couldn't be. It's automated. But they are good enough uh, so that people actually like our reports. Of course, the, of course, Artemis has an API if you, for example, want to interact with automated, with other systems. Uh, and it's possible to translate the reports. Uh, we have Polish translations, and if you want to add translations into your language and notify your entities, I strongly encourage you to do this. You may ask your favorite uh, uh, LLM, uh, LLM tool to translate uh, uh, the translation files to any language you want, and from what I discussed with people from other countries, the, the automated translations are actually pretty good. Okay. Our approach is that we are open. We publish the IPs uh, we are scanning from. Uh, we describe what we are doing. We try to rate limit uh, the scanning so that we don't break anything. Nobody complained that, hey, we bro you broke our hospital systems and it was a very, it was very dangerous. Nobody, we, we, we don't have, uh, we don't have such complaints. Um, we don't wait for the scans to finish, because the scans are slow. So even if the scan is in progress, we can send a package of reports, and after two weeks send a new package of reports, so that the entities can fix something until they, they get a new package. Uh, we call the scanned entities, uh, and we allow submitting domains voluntarily. Uh, currently, it's in a low-tech way, so people can write us an email about hey, please scan these domains, but we are currently launching a new system which will allow people to just register for scanning without any, without any manual interven in intervention. So, uh, the most important thing is we try to do things well enough. If a module is broken, we scan using the rest until it gets fixed. If we don't have a green light to scan all entities, we start small with one set of entities. Because if we try to be perfect, you, we wouldn't start anything. So, uh, the conclusion of my talk uh, would be that first, uh, there is still uh, lots of low-hanging vulnerabilities. Second, uh, there is a lot of uh, good offensive security tools and scanning, for example, uh, who of you is from a national CSERT? Uh, who of you is from a hosting provider? Nobody? Okay, so some of you can have the possibility to, to run such scans. As research, as an, for example, as university research, I don't know what is a, the legal, legal basis in your country. Maybe you are an, a university and can, can run such scans. Maybe you are uh, a CSERT. Uh, you are not hosting providers, as you said. Uh, even plain uh, WordPress version check would uncover many problems. And if you are able to I don't know, send a package of 10,000 of problems to entities in your country, you have an opportunity to improve something. So if you have legal basis, if you have an opportunity to run such project, by any means, go for it. And what is, I think, most important in, uh, in the success of this project, because after two years I can call it definitely a success, uh, that iterative de development contributed to, its uh, to the success. So we didn't have a five-year plan with a lot of uh, large team and milestones. We just wanted to 
scan for one type of vulnerability on one type of entities and send emails. Start with WordPress version check. And then we iterated. Added more things, uh, added more types of entities, started scanning Polish government sites as soon as we were allowed to. And then we iterated, increased the scope, increased the capabilities of the tool, but we started with something very small, which was still an improvement of the security of the country, because we still were able to notify entities about security vulnerabilities. If you want to start such project, download Artemis, uh, start small, uh, mm, download Artemis, uh, and a separate repository with extra modules which, which we have to keep separate for licensing reasons. Uh, set up Artemis because we have a documentation. Uh, mm, take one list of domains, the easiest you can get an approval for. Because, yeah, hospitals are hard to get approval. Maybe it's easier for something else, with something else. Translate Artemis with, uh, to your language, because we have docs, uh, how to do that. Scan, send the first package of results, and then you will be able to convince the shareholders that, yeah, the scanning makes sense, because in Poland it made. And it's not that Poland is, I don't know, more broken than any other country. We are all in the same boat. So, so yeah, so you will definitely find uh, the first batch of, I don't know, 1,000 or 5,000 problems to, to be sent to scanned entities. Uh, and after that, you may iterate. Uh, and if you have any problems, you may contact us. And we will be glad to help you with setting up your scanning pipeline if you are a national C cert, for example. Uh, and good luck. Do you have any questions? Thank you for a great talk. Uh, question about the rate limiting and ISPs. So did you straight away start with your rate limiting one API call per scan target, uh, or did that come from a result of someone blocking you? So we deal with a lot of scanning, so we see that the problem isn't national law or something, it's ISPs saying, no, you need to have an agreement with us and with the client whose site we're, host, uh, we're scanning, we need to see an agreement between you guys and with us, and only then you can scan. So they're saying that the, basically, our clients are violating their hosting agreements by having these scans. So, do you have any issues with that, or is your rate limiting enough to fly by the radar? Uh, of course, we have. Uh, of course, we have issues with, uh, for example, uh, web application firewalls blocking us, or Cloudflare, or any, uh, or any other. I, I don't know security boxes, uh, because even if we uh, even if we slowed slowed down, we still perform exploits. So, for example, Nuclei runs a lot of. Uh, Actual, exp actual exploits. So, for example, I don't know, actual SQL injection exploitation attempts. So, uh, we get blocked all the time and we, com we recommend the administrators to whitelist our IPs. So, that's uh, why the IPs are public. And these rate limits are, uh, uh, don't come from any, uh, any national law. So, we are not required by law. We just decided to do this uh, from, from common sense. And uh, the rate limits were more strong even earlier, but uh, we observed that uh, there are, the we are not breaking something, we can go a little bit faster. I don't know whether this answers your questions. Another question here. Yes, <clears throat> just a question. Uh, do, you, do you deal with CAPTCHAs or...? Uh, nope. No. So you skip the scanning if there is a CAPTCHA or Cloudflare? Yes. Okay. Yes, we encourage the administrators to whitelist our IPs because there is too, 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 too much, uh, too many different uh, different tools to block access to be able to handle each of them. Like, hi. How much work goes into making sure that the organizations give you? an up-to-date list of domains and how, how much work is it going to just maintaining that list of domains that you have? 
Uh, the most work is not maintaining the list of domains because we have public data sources and we just need to check whether they are good enough, whether it's not like too, too, whether they, are not, uh, they, they don't have too big percentage of bad domains. The most work is finding contacts because uh, the institutions uh, don't always provide good contacts. Uh, they, the contacts can get, get obsolete or we don't have any. So we sometimes. We, we, have, we have to have actual people browsing to the website and checking the contact email. So we have uh, people doing, doing that, which is, uh, uh, which is uh, maybe not, not the optimal way, and we work on improving this, but, but this, is, uh, this is harder than finding a list of domains. But of course, you may be an, in a better place. So for example, maybe you can have, uh, I don't know, some legal requirements for, for contact list. So you, you, will have, you may have different problems. I think that was it. Thank you, Christoph. Thank you.